Now, former Denel board chairperson Marty Jansa van Rensburg has been in the hot seat at the state capture inquiry. The state arms company is embroiled in corruption and maladministration allegations, of course. Our reporter Erin Bates is uh, well, was at the inquiry and she now joins me from our studio. She's come back home. Erin, uh, let's talk first about maybe the second testimony or the second evidence heard uh, at uh, the inquiry, and that was from Benny Gian, a former VR laser director and shareholder. Now, he testified uh, claiming that, in essence, he was basically strangled out of VR laser. Indeed, he was one of the shareholders in VR Laser in 2013 when a new investor came on board in the form of Salim Essa and another man who's connected to Transnet. And uh, what Gianni said is that he stayed on as a minority shareholder with a stake of about 25%, 25.1 if my uh, numbers serve me. And uh, things became so unpleasant that he then sold his uh, stake in the business. He claims he lost on about on lost out on about 8 million rand rather whereas the other shareholders had sold their stakes the year before and importantly he claims that even though he understood the partnership to really be with Salim Essa and one other uh, that Tony or Rajesh Tony Gupta appeared during one of the meetings and it slowly dawned on him uh, that Salim Essa was actually just a front uh, for other people notably from the Gupta family. So the Gupta family would actually just walk into VR Laser, into some of the board meetings, even though they were not shareholders, they were not board members. Is that what you're saying? That's what he was saying? That is what he was saying under oath at the Zondo Commission today. Important to note there that there's also a link with the then president's son, Duduzane Zuma. And this is because on Gianni's testimony, the company that had this now majority stake in VR Laser, which provided a lot of equipment linked to armored vehicles produced by Danel, that majority stake was held by a company linked to Westdawn, which is linked to Oak Bay Investments. And Duduzane Zuma was involved in the stake in the business. He said he eventually decided to sell his shares. It was quite an acrimonious process, says Gianni, and he then stayed on as a director of the company at VR Laser for about a year. And during that time, he says, he was flown to India where he met with China South Rail uh, and also saw, um, oversaw rather some of the business dealings that VR Laser had with the likes of Danel. And so here we see quite starkly mention of the Guptas, of the likes of Tony Rajesh Gupta, or Rajesh Tony Gupta, also his brother RJ Gupta who apparently came to the VR laser premises and also the former president's son Duduzane Zuma. All three names not unfamiliar of course to the Zondo Commission and its legal team. Quite familiar names as the proceedings continue. Okay, now earlier before uh, Gianni's uh, evidence, uh, we also heard from former Denel board chairperson uh, Marty Jansa van Rensburg. Now she spoke about the removal of the boards in 2011 and in 2015. Just uh, tell us about that. Yes, what's important to note here is that this was the time of Minister Lynn Brown or then Minister Lynn Brown's tenure as the Minister of Public Enterprises. Janssen van Rensburg saying that she won't speculate on why the minister decided to effectively conduct an almost wholesale uh, reboot of that board of Denel during a critical period, said Janssen van Rensburg. But she said that she thought that uh, Brown's decision to overhaul that board, except for one member, uh, was not uh, sound. It wasn't of good logic, you could say. And and uh, she cited a number of achievements that the board had managed to rack up uh, by the time that they were taken out and replaced. And there we had the chairperson asking, but was uh, the minister in fact replacing the board, that board uh, being overhauled, or was she simply not renewing contact contracts rather uh, that she'd set in place for a year when she first arrived at public enterprises, really giving the minister the benefit of the doubt here and perhaps quibbling the idea that the minister was part of an effective conspiracy uh, to get in a new pliable board that then replaced the executive at Danel and favoured this planned joint venture between Danel, incorporated in the UAE as Danel Asia and VR Laser Asia, which we've heard time and again at uh, the hearings, was effectively a shell company, again Salim Essa, the Gupta lieutenant or Gupta associate, um, being the sole shareholder of VR Laser Asia. And Jansa van Rensburg actually saying that on her assessment, much like her predecessor at the inquiry yesterday,
yesterday, ESSA was the one to gain the most from the way in which this joint venture had been structured. But important to note that while Danel has faced allegations of malfeasance, wrongdoing, corruption over this joint venture, in the end it was actually halted. It was stymied because there were so many red flags over the way in which uh, the venture had been uh, set up and constructed. It's all very convoluted, isn't it? Okay, so the inquiry resumes tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning. Who will be uh, giving evidence? Yes, so we have another executive from Danel, uh, Mr. Saluji, who we understand is going to be speaking throughout the day. He's the only witness set down for tomorrow as we continue to hone in on this state-owned company. That on the tail end of the testimony we heard about ESCOM, allegations of corruption involving Tegeta, yet another company linked to the Guptas and Dudazane Zuma. So Mr. Saluji coming on the stand tomorrow. Then, of course, we have a break on Thursday, which is Human Rights Day. And then on Friday, we're hit, set to hear from a man we've just seen on ENC the head of elections for the ANC, Fikile Mbalula. Okay, a lot of us waiting for Friday. Thank you so much, Aaron Bates there, keeping an eye on uh, see what's happening at the state capture inquiry. It all resumes again tomorrow morning at 9.30.